Greetings and welcome fellow YouTubers out there. Today we are looking at Dark Eclipse, Unearthing Mars 2 and The Chantry. All that coming up on this week's weekly update. Okay, first up, as normal, the apologies. First, uh, yeah, on our little stream that we had on Tuesday, when I was uh, having a look at uh, Dark Eclipse for the first time, got a little bit interrupted, and some of you might have heard my missus screaming in the background. Uh, uh, I do apologise that about there was a, just a slight accident and I had to stop the stream whilst I just go and cleared up the uh, mess. I was having a little bit of uh, problems cooking, but no, no, nothing bad happened. Everything's all fine. Okay, my missus isn't actually here at the moment to confirm that she's fine, but she's all okay. Uh, maybe I'll get a little uh, message from her later just saying that she's fine. Um, but with that all, all said, I do apologise about having to uh, stop midstream um whilst doing that but real life comes before streaming unfortunately sorry guys but you take second place when it comes to uh, real life stuff but yeah apart from that we did also have quite an quite an active week this week where as you can see we have got three games to be looking at this week uh, one of them being Dark Eclipse, uh, and as, as I said right at the beginning, we also got the Chantry, uh, and also Unearthing Mars 2. Now, the developers are from Dark Eclipse, a company called Sunsoft, uh, actually emailed me and uh, would like me to do a, uh, a proper review of their game. Uh, and to which uh, they've given me some credits on the game so that I can actually purchase all the items, uh, all, all the uh, accounts and characters, and have a little look through that. That's not this video, but in a late, uh, later video after I have gone through all these characters, I will look into these characters and find out all the details of these characters, um, what they can do, the pluses and minuses, uh, and do a proper review on those on those um on the game at a later point this week so shortly after i've finished creating this video i will start working on that video however like i said this isn't the full review that will come up later it is just going to be a temporary look at from what i did through my live streams over the past week First up, as I said, is uh, Dark uh, dark Eclipse. Now I'm going to have to look at my script. Oh, sorry down here. <laughs> Trying to like, not get my iPad like shining in my face. because uh, uh, First up, we have Dark Eclipse, which is a PSVR's first proper mobile game. And by mobile, mobile game, I mean MOBA. MOBA game and by MOBA I mean you're given a map with your base in one in your corner and the enemy base in the enemy's corner and you proceed by slowly moving your units from your base to the enemy gathering resources building structures destroying enemy structures and in an attempt to destroy the enemy base uh, why is that isn't that command and conquer from the 90s was command and conquer a MOBA I thought that was a real-time strategy or an RTS. No, MOBA is a multiplayer online battle arena. You are given three leader units, each with their own skills, abilities and subunits to control. The leaders level up in classic RPG style by gaining XP from killing bad guys. The higher their levels, the more powerful structures they can build and these structures operate on two fronts. The first is to gather coinage so that their leaders can upgrade their troops uh, subunits to more powerful subunits. And the second is to act as a defense platform. 
when an ally, ally leader is near one, it will start to target and shoot nearby enemy leaders and monsters. However, if you don't have a leader near one, they will quickly become target practice for the opposition. As you can tell, that bit was scripted. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. What did I think about this game over the line? Now, honestly, uh, hands up in the air, I haven't really been much of a MOBA player. I tried it I tried it once before with like Dota, uh, and I really wasn't that interested too much into it. Probably for the whole reason that you can't see, you don't have the progression uh, to progression to keep after the game's finished. I mean, once the game's finished, it was gone, and I didn't like that. That wasn't my sort of style. I like something that I can build up over time and actually Ragnarok the area. <laughs> but um, this game here, I think I saw a, uh, a leveling up system outside of the game uh, and with this leveling up system you can grind your way to get these higher tier characters uh, and that are supposed to dominate the area or if you don't want to do the grind you can actually purchase them with DC uh, with which is their in-game currency that you buy from uh, from the stores now normally I don't really like the idea of buying stuff but this is a free to play game and if you can get the, the items that you want if you can get the characters you need by grinding your way through it then all the more for uh, all the more for you um but yeah people that they will get they need to get their money somehow and get by 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 buying more powerful or more decent characters it does sort of become a, a pay, pay to play scenario However, there is an AI option, so you're not always going straight into the fray. You're not always going against other humans that are probably ball massive power boss hungry characters to annihilate everyone. You can go against an AI character, which is a little bit of an easier way to grind through and, um, and get those higher levels that you need. But, uh, but yeah, as I said, what I will do in time uh, over the next few days is I will try and have a look at all these characters and I'll do a detailed analysis on the art style and the graphics uh, and also um, the abilities of each of these characters uh, as we go through them. Okay, next up we have Unearthing Mars 2. No, I, I played the original game, the first on uh, Earth in Mars, and it was still like the same using teleportation location markers. I really don't like that movement style. People, if, you, if you're using the aim controller in a first person shooter uh, perspective, use free movement. It should work. I don't like the idea of standing around on the spot while shooting wave after wave of enemies coming at me. I don't like the fact that I can't really dodge unless I'm moving my head backwards and forwards. And even then, it doesn't always work because they target in on you and you will always definitely hit. Those are the downsides. If you're using the aim controller, move. You've got two st sticks there that can walk around the area. Use them. Allow us to do free movement. That is what we need for a first-person shooter. However, in saying that, it is much better game than Bravo Team. I absolutely like this game. The, the story was awesome. The, uh, the graphics was amazing. The sounds, the effects. I mean... You can see it was like action after action after action, action story, action story, action story. There was a sort of a slight jump in difficulty level in this, though, on the fact that um, you go along, you're, you're, you're running along, and if you die, they say, Oh, fuck, don't worry about death. Yeah, the, the main character you're playing doesn't die in this, so therefore you don't die. Just press this button and carry on as you was. And I'm thinking, well, if that's the case, why have the entire death mechanic if you're just going to press the X button to bypass it? It seemed odd. But then when you get to the second boss, spoilers, spoilers, well, not really spoilers, because I'm not talking about the storyline, 
um, when you get to the second spots, it will actually um, start right from the beginning. And considering you're used to like just pressing X to carry on, just go, go keep on going, just to start from the beginning of the boss every time that he kills you, uh, gets a little bit frustrating. So there's no easy balance on that. But it is more of that Dark Souls sort of thing where you have to like um, press this button at this time, shoot, duck, dodge, duck, dive, shoot, dot duck dive shoot dodge duck dive and rinse and repeat until you finally wear the enemy down uh, so if you like dark souls you will like that second boss but for the rest of it it is a lot of shooting a lot of action it really takes place of the um the quick time i wouldn't say quick time events but it's more of a quick shoot time event so you go into like this slow motion move where everything is all like highlighting you have to like shoot the uh, shoot certain points not um because if you don't then there are lots of bad guys that will still be alive that will try to kick your ass when you uh, when you land however another thing i wanted to say about the bad points on this is that those um red markers that are supposed to show weaknesses is strange because you can only see them in focus mode and even if you shoot them outside of focus mode, it doesn't count as a weakness. For instance, I noticed that the um, weakness marker showed up on an exploding gas barrel, so on a, an exploding gas tank. So if you shoot that marker, the gas tank explodes. However, if you're not in focus mode, the weakness sign doesn't show up, and therefore you shoot the gas tank, it doesn't explode, it doesn't react. So therefore, that sort of mechanic is a little bit broken because you have to enter in the focus mode for like the headshots to actually mean something or if you shoot them in these areas or shoot these items, they would actually do something. But the focus mode will only stay active for a few minor seconds to allow you to do stuff. But all in all, it is expensive. But for the expense, you do get a little bit of a good storyline and a good shooter. Um, as I said, good graphics, uh, all around kind of decent game. I, I like this game. Uh, I kind of recommend it, but not at the current price it's at. If it goes down a little bit in price, a little bit, maybe it has a little bit of a bargain or like 25% off or something like that, then definitely go for it because I said I had a good time with this. And I've only done half the game so far. As soon as I manage to figure out how to beat that second boss, I'll be uploading the other half of the game. Okay. Um, my camera's flashing. Oh, take, take free. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. My camera just seemed to have uh, shut down on me because I ran out of power on it. So, carrying on again. Now the final entry that we have for this week's weekly update is a program called The Chantry. Now, I say program because this is not a game. It is not even an experience or even a walking simulator. This is a documentary. Yes, it treats uh, an old... You're given a virtual tour, a VR tour of an old Victorian house with notes and bits to look at uh, as it tries to relate to you a story. And this story being of a physician during the smallpox epidemic trying to cure the plague that is the smallpox. And it looks at many people's point of views, many people's livelihoods, uh, from the master of the house to the servants. We find that uh, even the children have notes in here, the children that died through smallpox, the terror that it induced into many people, the fact that this was uh, known as the White Death, how it encompassed every, for everything and everyone. It was their way of life, having to deal with smallpox and the horrors that this entails. Like I said, this is not a game. This is a documentary of the insights and views of people of that time. 
Now in saying this, this is not a program I would actually recommend, not because of any badness or any horrific sights or anything like that, in the fact that it is just not interesting, unless you are interested in the history. It's not it has got no gameplay, no real proper story, nothing to enjoy yourself with. There is a small minor puzzle element where you have to try and figure out or remember where all the keywords are located scattered around the house. But apart from that, it is just an audio museum seen in VR. And that's it. Nothing really else to it. Now, if you are the type of person that likes, thinks, oh, this is an educational thing, this is historical, it will teach you uh, about the, the history of our past lives and culture that we used to have back in like the uh, 18th century or such, I think it's the 18th century, um, then yeah, go for it, because as I said, it does have, it has a lot of detail in regards to people of that time and how that was affected, how the smallpox uh, was eventually, well not necessarily cured, but vaccinated against by using an alternate, um, by purposely, uh, by purposely getting their children sick with a lesser uh, illness with a lesser virus such as cowpox I think it was in this case uh, and then using that lesser virus to build up the, uh, their immunity uh, to to protect them from smallpox and the story will go on and say how they was ridiculed about infecting their children but at the fact that that infection was what helped cure the smallpox epidemic in, moving forwards um, it was kind of interesting. Uh, also, I found that it was uh, interesting to know that people like the servants who had at one point suffered the smallpox and survived, their scabs turned into scarring tissues on their body. And those scarring tissues would be representative in a CV um, for employment. So that, say, so yeah. So the, uh, the maids or servants would go up to prospective employers uh, and show the scars on their arms, say, look, I've, small, I've survived the smallpox, here's my proof, here, here's my evidence right here. Uh, and that, that would get them employment because the smallpox epidemic was so bad that almost, anyone that, uh, almost everyone will be getting it at one point in their lives and most people would die from it. And if, we'd known, if someone has been known to have survived the smallpox, then they know to, they'll be alive to be, uh, to be in full-time employment going forward. So having smallpox, small, having smallpox scars was... I um, wonder if I should have said spoilers at the beginning of the video. <laughs> but having like smallpox scars is certainly um, a good qualification to have when, go when seeking out prospective employers, which I thought was kind of interesting. The graphics are not too bad, very box arty type. Now, if you're the type that does computer graphics, you know what I mean when I say box art. And uh, yeah, it, this, uh, it was the majority of the environment did seem a bit hollow, but nicely presented, nicely well done. Although I didn't like the fact that I went to the second floor and there was the odd door that opened into a white mist that led up open led out into the graveyard but i guess that the developers didn't really have much in the way of time to develop actual proper maps that led out from the house into the graveyard of the back garden and in saying that um yeah for a documentary i think it was good it was educational it told the story till it needed to tell um and I say well done for creating a very decent documentary. As a game, experience, walking simulator or whatever, no go. 
steer clear of. I, uh, if you're expecting a game experience, don't even bother looking for this in the bargain bucket when it's got like one pound one pound offer. It, you you won't find it interesting. You won't find it enjoyable. In fact, for the majority of this program, I was actually trying to just get through the game to get to the end by skipping all of the dialogue and text. Now, I'm sure if, the, if you're someone there that has time on their hands and they're really interested in the smallpox epidemic and want to know detailed information, you can just turn over a page and then wait as it spews out 15 minutes of dialogue to tell you what's going on, what point in time and history and what was happening. And like I said, if that sort of thing for you, go for it. If you want an educational tool for your children, go for it. If you like history and information about the smallpox uh, and you want something to brush up or find out about or learn, go for it. But as a game, avoid at all costs. This has got no gameplay in it, no storyline in it, apart from historical activities. Uh, and it is mostly people, although I think some of them are famous voice actors. I certainly recognise one or two of the voice actors. I think one of them might have been, been one of the doctors, although I can't for the life of me uh, figure out which doctor it was. Um, but yeah, as I say, as a game, avoid at all costs, because this is not a game for you guys. Okay, so... That is these three, um, the three games that we did have a look at this week. As I said, uh, Dark Eclipse, um, Unearthing Mars 2, and The Chantry. Now, as I said, I've been approached by Dar uh, Sunsoft Studios for Dark Eclipse so, uh, to have a little more or less an in-depth look at their game. So... I will be going going through their game and like, literally ripping it to pieces, having a look and detail point of every single part of their uh, game. And I will give you a 100% honest review. I mean, as I say, although they've given me in-game credit to get all these tier monsters, this is not one of these, um, you, you will not purchase a, uh, a proper, sorry, you will not purchase a, uh, a positive review. I am going to give a full in-depth analysis of everything that we've got in here and I'll give you my honest of, uh, honest account and honest point of view as we go through as uh, I go through each and every set, uh, stage of it. Uh, cool. So don't forget to look out for that. I hopefully on sun Sunday, I will be going through doing the um, look, looking through the uh, the stuff, uh, the video contents and such. See and get what I need for that, and hopefully I will get that out early next week for you guys. Uh, okay, so I think that is it for this week. Another little note, I have been looking a lot into manga of lately, especially like Isekai, uh, Isekai or however it's pronounced, style of manga. For example, um, Overlord, and yes, I got some comments on if Overlord is a Isekai or not, so, and other sort of uh, great films out there. Now... I haven't really talked much about this or, uh, on my uh, on my videos of late, but I have really been wanting to uh, start getting a little bit of a dialogue about some of the mangas that we've been watching of late as well, on top of some of my PSVR stuff. I mean, if that is the sort of thing that you'll be interested, please let me know, and I might start putting a section on the end, like right where I'm talking right now, of uh, manga-related stuff, uh, such or either manga-related stuff or other animation stuff out there. I mean, do you want to know about like my thoughts on Steven Universe? If there is anything, Rick and Morty, another great thing, uh, another great uh, animation series. Uh, as I said, a lot of uh, manga and anime stuff that's going on out there. If you want me to start adding or talking about animated series, uh, series or other programs. 
uh, this part of the video after I've done all my reviews just a little sync on the end um, please let me know if it's sort of the things that you would like me to uh, start including because I said there is a lot of stuff that I want to talk about and I might even start putting them into separate videos of such okay I think I'll leave that up here for now as I said don't forget to look out for the full um, dark, uh, dark Eclipse uh, video later on this week so thanks very much for watching please don't forget to like and subscribe there's still a lot more going on around here thanks very much and I'll see you guys out there